Sometimes I think that my role in life is to explain chemistry to physicists and also to explain physics to chemists back and forth, you know. It is this ability to work across boundaries and see the interconnections and intersections among areas of science that has spurred Lewis Bruce's research success. As one of the most important physical chemists of his generation, Dr. Bruce drew upon his background in chemistry, physics, and mathematics, and the solid-state physics he taught himself to create the field of nanochemistry. This nanoscience pioneer created colloidal quantum dots, or nanodots, and continues to expand our knowledge of nanocrystals and nanowires. His basic research has led to advances in such applications as semiconductors, molecular electronic devices, solar cells, and biological tags for imaging. For his groundbreaking work in nanochemistry, the Welch Foundation honors Lewis E. Bruce with the 2013 Welch Award in Chemistry. Named after Houston oil man and philanthropist Robert Alonzo Welch, this award recognizes chemists whose dedication to basic research contributes to the betterment of humankind. Dr. Bruce demonstrated that the properties of very small particles differ from their larger versions, establishing nanochemistry as a distinct field. He also discovered that nanocrystals' size and shape dictate their color and electronic properties. So the size business matters, but what Lou saw is that not just the size matters in general, but that specifically the actual properties of the elements depend on how big, how big a piece you're talking about which is really in a major new insight, and uh, you can say it almost is a, a new, new area of chemistry. In the old days, there was physics and there was chemistry. And what Lewis was able to do was bridge the gap or th those gaps. So when does chemistry become physics? When does physics become chemistry? When do solids become molecules? When do molecules become solids? When does a piece of silicon stop being a solid, and when does it start being a a collection of atoms. What are these, these nanocluster things? There's something, a solid here, a molecule here. There is something in between. And we're just still now figuring out what that is. And Lewis showed us all um, where to look. He is best known for his discovery of colloidal quantum dots, or nanodots. These semiconductor nanocrystals have unusual electronic and physical properties that make them useful for applications ranging from microelectronics and optical devices to quantum computing and medical imaging. Almost 30 years after this seminal discovery, researchers are continuing to find new applications for nanodots, with television makers now using them to provide more vivid color. It illustrates this thing that you see over and over again in basic research. Um, very hard to predict how some new science will actually be used. The main advantage of doing basic research is you publish these articles. All these people who read the articles are, have their own problems to solve in their own field, you know, and they make the connection between what you've discovered and the properties of the things that you've discovered and the application in their field, and that's the way science goes forward. Dr. Bruce expected to follow in his father's footsteps and become a businessman, but as a child of the Sputnik generation, he was fascinated by science and pursued studies in chemistry and physics almost as a hobby. He attended Rice University on an ROTC scholarship, earned a PhD in physical chemistry at Columbia, and served four years at the Naval Research Lab working in the applied physics area. He joined Bell Labs in the Physical Chemistry Department in 1974, and after 22 productive years, he moved to Columbia University to continue his research and to teach. Dr. Bruce met his wife-to-be, Marilyn, soon after starting his stint at the Naval Research Lab. I met Marilyn in church. She was quite special and happy and smiling all the time, laughing. Special person. They were engaged in six months and married within the year. They have three children, Michael, a psychiatrist, Christina, an oncologist, and Elizabeth, an English teacher. They all share a love of travel and spent many vacations hiking and camping. Dr. Bruce is a history buff, particularly fascinated by American history, and enjoys gardening. He's a fanatic gardener 
And so he's, I think he's the type of person that likes to get exercise. He likes to be doing something, but when he gets burned out at work, he comes home and he gardens. I think he just really likes the science. When he went to Columbia, he didn't even know that he would be a chemist or a scientist. He just figured he would do this degree because it looked interesting. I mean, I can't imagine getting a PhD in chemistry just because it looked interesting. Dr. Bruce combines his love of science with discovery, chemical synthesis, characterization, theoretical modeling, and laser spectroscopy to understand nanostructures. Today, he's immersing himself in biology to support research into the long-range transfer of electrons in bacteria that live in soil. His other current work is focused on exploring the optical and electronic properties of nanocrystals, nanowires, and carbon nanotubes using microscopy and Raman spectroscopy. His goal is to understand the size evolution of solid state properties from molecular properties and to create new nanoscale materials by both kinetic and thermodynamic self-assembly. I'd like to pursue fields where nobody else is working on it. You know, it's, it, the, the key thing in science is to find a new area. And uh, so coming back to Columbia, uh, um, I began to go sideways, uh, sideways in a research sense. So I, I began to work on carbon nanotubes and in the last five years on graphene. A lot of very interesting stuff going on there that's simply a consequence of dimensionality as an independent issue as, as opposed to size. I think carbon nanotubes and graphene will probably have more application in industry than the quantum dots. You could say that Lewis's evolution as a scientist looks and mirrors uh, the evolution of science of chemical physics, but I think that's backwards. I think the evolution in our field mirrors one or two really great people, and Lewis is one of them, driving that, that move forward for science and particularly for chemical physics. He thinks deeply, he understands things deeply, and he puts multiple things together. So he relates to, you know, whatever it is, if it's a nanoparticle of silicon, he relates that to the semiconductor devices that the, you know, that the engineers are making. I mean, he has an unusual ability to pull together different things and see, the, see that the physics in this thing is similar to the physics in that thing, and then put it together to do something new. Colleagues say that Dr. Bruce's broad knowledge of science and ability to connect seemingly disparate fields is complemented by his skill at collaboration, whether with research partners, fellow academics, or students. And he's very good at collaborating. He's one of the most collaborative individuals I've had the good fortune to work with. He knows how to nurture everybody. The sciences have gotten so complicated, no one person can do it. I mean, it's just there's too much expertise needed and Lewis, Lewis knows how to get the best out of all of us. I mean, Lewis has this, this almost unique combination of, of infinite creativity on the one hand, but the ability to carry through and finish uh, a, a scientific question uh, in a very uh, concerted and, and uh, directed way. And so, you know, if you combine those two, uh, you can create a, a high impact. He's very strategic. He doesn't take on a, a research project or a research concept unless he is convinced that by doing so, he will change how we think about things. He invented fundamentally a new scientific field. It was really astonishing. And when you think about it, you can see why it works but he was the one who realized that it would, what it would do and, and how important it would be. Now, in recognition of his broad and deep contributions to science, please join us in saluting Louis E. Bruce as the 2013 recipient of the Welch Award in Chemistry.